off today. I don't know for sure that we'll be able to, but, but we're going to give it a good try. Keep in mind that the Ramyan is written uh, as a way of reaching the lower orders, of reaching the individuals who are not well-educated, the, the individuals who don't have the time to sit and pour over scriptures. And so they're being given these stories, which are really adventurous tales. Um, but through those, a person can glean insights into the philosophy, into the theology of the uh, tradition. So it's very different from sitting down and, and, and working through the Vedas or, or even the Bhagavad Gita, um, which is philosophy on top of philosophy. This, it's hidden, it's buried. But hopefully as you go along, just like the individuals who would hear these stories recited uh, are picking up on some of the key elements that um, the, the, the message is trying to, to present. So uh, anyway, let's go ahead and get back into it here. We saw Hanuman uh, came forth and Hanuman and Ram had met. And we knew that uh, Hanuman, as we explained, was this individual who has tremendous power and ability, but yet he has tremendous humbleness too. He was an individual who didn't know you know, just how powerful he was because he took on that role of the, the, the um, humble, submissive individual, that suffering servant of Ram's, and he gave himself in devotional service to him. Now, Hanuman had explained to Rama that these two monkeys, Sugriv and Vali, were essentially at war with each other. One was the rightful ruler, uh, this is Sugriv, and Vali had usurped that power from him. And Vali just wanted ego. He, he, he worked from that standpoint of ego. He wanted power. Uh, to govern, to control the masses. Well, Rama says, all right, I need your assistance, I need your help, so I'm willing to help you to defeat Valley, to reclaim your kingdom in exchange for your services and for your guidance. And so Sir Graves says, yes, I will put my entire kingdom at Rama's service if it will restore me to my rightful place. So Ram tells Sugriv to call Vali out in a fight. Now, Vali is much bigger, he's much stronger, but Ram says, I'm going to be hiding behind a tree, and I will kill Vali when the time comes. Now this idea kind of explains what we have to be willing to do. We have to be willing to stand up for what's right. We have to be willing to do our duty. Uh, to be willing to face trial, to face hardship in order to achieve it and to see that right is done. A person should not in, in any way shirk away from that duty or that responsibility. Remember that every individual, no matter who they are, has a sacred duty, their dharma, that they're expected to follow. And so you can't just sit back and wait. You have to be willing to stand up for what is right. Just like the Pandavas stood up for what is right in challenging the uh, Kurus in the uh, Mahabharata, we find here, you know, or, or for that matter, Rama's challenging of, of uh, Ravana in the Ramyan here. That also is standing up for what is right despite any opposition, uh, despite any problems that you might have. And so the fact that Sugriv is smaller and weaker than Valley should not stop him. For standing up for what is right. It also demonstrates to us that God is always going to be there to help us whenever we really need it. But we have to remember here that only God knows the right time for intervention. So in the story we find that Sugriv is going to be beaten to a pulp by his brother Vali. And Vali is going to stand there afterwards and taunt him and mock him and this is not at all what Sugriv was expecting. He was expecting Rama to come forward and to, to destroy Vali. And so Sugriv, he struggles back, he crawls over to Ram, and he questions him. 
And Ram says, you know, you two brothers, you look so much alike, I didn't want to kill the wrong one. So I wasn't sure who I should be going after. Well, Rama says, what I'm going to do is give you this flower garden, uh, garland. Put this flower garland around your neck, and then I'll be able to tell you, uh, tell you apart. Go into the fight again. Well, Sagreev's a little leery, but he decides that he's going to trust Ram one more time. Ram heals Sagreev, and so he comes forward, he calls out Vali, but Vali this time is intent on killing his brother. Well, at the moment when Sagreev is ready to give up, Ram intervenes and kills Vali with his arrow. Ram is challenged at this time by the the, uh, dying Vali. Ram is supposed to be virtuous. He's supposed to be a good, noble, upright individual, an example for all of us to follow. So how could he kill him like a coward from a place of safety? Right? Vali is, is really challenging Rama on this. You know, uh, Here I was in a noble battle with Sugriv, and you from the bushes, ambush, shoot me down. What kind of virtuous person is that? Well, Ram goes on to explain that Vali had committed a lot of acts of adharma, a lot of acts that were contrary to his sense of duty, to his sense of dharma. He committed a lot of sin. And Vali makes a reply here, which says, I'm a monkey. You're holding me to the standards of a human, but I'm not a human. I'm a monkey. It's not immoral for a monkey to steal wives. It's not immoral for a monkey to steal kingdoms. Those are human rules. Now notice what's happening here, is that Vali is trying to put forward a good, logical, sensible argument for why Ram's actions are wrong and why Vali had every right to do the things that he did, falling back upon his status as an animal as opposed to a human. But Ram replies to him, that if he's able to speak to Ram in this fashion, then the same rules would apply to him as apply to humans. If you know about morality, then you have a duty to obey it. If you know about virtue, you have to strive for it. If you know about courage, you have to act on it. You can't just hide behind this this mantle and say, oh, look at what I am. I'm a monkey. You can't hold me accountable. By showing that he has mental capacity. This is an idea we see both in the East and the West. What is it that makes someone responsible morally for an action? Morality depends upon reason, right? It depends upon our ability to justify our actions to say here is what is right from here is what is wrong, and to give a rationale for why that is. And so if Vali has the mental capacity to be able to reason and think in the way that he is and to construct this argument, then he has enough rationale to understand the difference between right and wrong. He has the, the ability to understand that his actions in stealing his brother's kingdom was wrong. Um... You know, again, if you have this sense of virtue, you have to strive for that virtue. If you have courage, you have to act on it. If you have an understanding of morality, you have a duty to obey that of morality. To be fully human means to act like Ram. It means modeling yourself on the highest being, never the lowest, right? Don't, don't hide yourself behind some label and say that, you know, that I, I'm nothing more than this. And that's not the way to handle it. You want to be the best of individuals. And so, just as we see again with, with Aristotle uh, in the Western world, we'll see it again with Confucius in the Eastern world, um, we need these role models that we're going to follow. People who show us the way of right from the way of wrong. You know, we, 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 in many ways, of course, we use reason and rationality, but we also have a, a sense of, of um, 
a sense of being in which we learn through mimicry. And we can't mimic something if we've never seen it before. So when we see the highest of individuals, when we see someone who acts the way Ram does, we have an obligation to follow that and try to be like that, not like the lowest version. Valley chose wrongly, and because of that, he deserved to be killed. Now, at this point, Valley is going to realize the truth of this. He's had a revelation right there on his deathbed. And Rama says, because of this, I'm willing to heal you. I'm willing to let you live. But Vali refuses. He says, no. He says, everybody has to die eventually. And he was just shot by Ram himself. He'd been given this divine revelation, this illumination upon his deathbed. And so he doesn't want to be healed. He doesn't want to be pulled away from that. He's received, as he perceives it now, this tremendous and wonderful gift. And so all that Vali asks for is Ram's blessing. Ram gives that blessing, and then Vali dies. Sugriv, now with Vali out of the way, reclaims his rightful position as the king of the monkeys, and he says, I am going to keep my word. And so Sagrave organizes this army of monkeys and bears, and he sends out literally millions of these animals searching for Sita. Now, he knows that Hanuman is the one who has to be the one to find him. Hanuman is the one that has to get there. But yet he's still doing this because he's made a promise, uh, and he's fulfilling that promise. This serves as uh, an important reminder In a lot of traditions, when we discover that salvation is through God alone, laziness takes over. We think we can just sort of sit back and not do anything. But although God's grace is crucial, uh, we need to put forth an effort, too. We need to demonstrate a sense of duty and to do our own part in all of this. You know, when, when... we understand that we don't have direct control and we have to wait for God's uh, action to save us. We might think that there's nothing that we can do. But this is telling us, even if everything is played out, we still have to put forth the effort. We still have to show that it's we understand our duty and that we're willing to fulfill it. So even though we know at this point, that Hanuman's the one who has to go off and find Sita. He's the only one that's going to be able to do that. Sugriv still keeps his word, and he still sends forth that army to seek them. Sugriv keeps his promise. This is actually a very good response to those people that might claim that in a tradition in which everyone eventually returns to the source, there's really no need for good works, there's no need for morality. One's going to be rejoined anyway. This story is demonstrating the error of that type of reasoning. You know, some people will will try to argue that, well, you know, here is this one original source, here is the divine, and everything came out of it. And in the end, everything's going to go right back into it again. What's the point in worrying about good deeds? What's the point in trying to discover the higher truth? Think about Plato and his um, uh, theory of the forms, right? You have this other realm, uh, the the realm of of, um, being, in which you have this absolute truth is in understanding that's found there. And then we have, by contrast, the world that we live in, right? And so that absolute soul or that that absolute uh, place possesses that absolute knowledge and understanding. We're born into this world and we forget it. We're supposed to strive towards trying to reclaim it, even though Plato would say that when we die, we go right back to it again. What's the point? in putting forth the effort to try to do something good or to learn something or advance something in this world if we're going right back from where we came in the first place. But the story that we get here from Sugriv and Vali 
is basically telling us that that's a wrong way of thinking. There's always a need for us to perform our duty. There's always a need for us to act from a standpoint of what is morally right, even though God is beyond the concept of good and evil. All of our action have to be good. All of our actions have to be in accordance with that sense of duty. Well, at this point, Rama is going to call Hanuman aside, and he's going to want him to go to to seek out Sita. But he wants to know, well, how am I going to be able to prove to her that it's really me? I mean, Ravana has the power of changing himself. He has all kinds of demons at his disposal. How will she believe me? And so Rama is going to give to Hanuman this golden ring, and around the ring it has his name inscribed, Ram, 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 all around it. And he, and he says that this ring is going to serve to let Sita know that you are my messenger, that you can be trusted. Now we said before that Hanuman was the sort of Christ-like figure in the story. And here we see him taking on that duty. He is the messenger of God. He is the one who is bringing knowledge to Sita, who, who remember, Sita's across a vast ocean. Uh, she is in this, this uh, Ashoka grove uh, under a tree, feeling isolated, feeling alone. And God wants to get his message to her. And so Hanuman is acting in that form to bring the message of God to the devotee. Christ came into this world to fulfill that duty as a messenger. So did Hanuman. This uh, sense in which we, we understand that the individual who feels isolated has to have a way of feeling a connection. And that's what that message is for. 